After spending a few days in Cusco and doing the Inca Trail hike to Machu Picchu, we arrived in Lima. We arrived in Lima, Peru from Cusco. It's only about, what, an hour and a half flight? Yeah. And this is our little Airbnb in Miraflores. Yeah. It's probably about a 40 minute crazy drive. They drive like, I've never seen anything like it. It's almost like they're trying to get in accidents. How much is this place a night? $37. So this place is about 37 bucks a night. Not bad. It's a few. Sunday, it's not too crazy. Normally, if it wasn't Sunday earlier in the morning, I think you'd hear the constant tooting of car horns. Almost got killed. Mirror Flores by the beach was absolutely beautiful. Really reminded me of Southern California, San Diego, or the LA area where just the amount of activity of people out there jogging, riding bikes, being on the beach boardwalk was very reminiscent of Southern California and just a gorgeous area. On Sundays, they close the entire highway down by the beach and there are literally thousands of bike riders out. Lima definitely has a very modern feel compared to Cusco. There's even a beautiful outdoor mall right above the beach. The thing that stood out the most on the entire trip to Peru was how good the food was. And Cusco was really good. Lima did not disappoint. There were some incredibly good restaurants at all types of price points. One negative thing about Lima is going throughout all the neighborhoods and Miraflores and where our Airbnb was and every residential property is protected by bars, glass on top of retaining walls, electric fence. You definitely get a sense that it's not the safest place, although walking around seemed perfectly fine. Once you get outside of Miraflores, right next to it is an area called Barranco. It's a beautiful artsy area, a lot of little shops, murals on the walls. Really cool place just to walk through. at the Arepa Cafe in uh, just above the beach, maybe by about three blocks. <laughs> Absolutely delicious. We already devoured the Arepas. And highly recommended. There's no seating on the street, but it is worth it. To... Our first dinner in Lima was at a fantastic place called Panchita. It was located in Miraflores, just a few blocks from our Airbnb, and we started off with stuffed red bell peppers. It was fantastic. It had a meat sauce, and it was smothered with <laughs> delicious cheese. Next up was a tamale with a tomato verde sauce. Unlike the tamales in Mexico, the tamales in Peru are not stuffed. Usually the ingredients are just mixed into the cornmeal mixture. Then we shared an order of Papa Riena, which is stuffed potatoes, and it was fantastic. What? For dessert, we shared picarones, which is a sweet potato and squash donut with a fig honey sauce. What a great way to finish the meal. Speed it up a little bit. The next night we classed it up a bit. We ate at Astrid and Gaston. Very nice upscale restaurant. Where are we at? Astrid e Gaston. And why'd you pick this place? Because it's like world famous. World famous, that's Lauren. She doesn't um, settle for Taco Bell. On Chico budget. It is, I think average US prices are probably about 30 to 40 dollars. Slow cooked lamb and a delicious beer day sauce. Started off with fusion pot stickers. 
and then after, then we finish the meal with an ice cream sampler. We are off on a day trip. We were gonna book it through a tour agency, but we waited too long, so we're doing it solo. Might be an interesting time. We're going to Caracas and these sand dunes of like three hours south of Lima, but it should be an interesting. We get an Uber, which is about 60 bucks. Yeah. But the tour would have been 100 each. Yeah. So. I think we'll pretty much break even. It was about a three hour drive. Once you just get a little bit outside of Lima, honestly, it was a little depressing. It's very third world, a lot of poverty, a lot of houses with makeshift roofs. It really is sad to see. Paracas is a quaint, simple fishing village. There is actually a lot to do. When we were there, it was very quiet because of COVID and also because it was a weekday, but normally you could go out to the National Reserve, you could rent boats, you could rent ATVs. It's normally a pretty good tourist site. Let's drive to Paracas from our... Yeah. Have our Pisco, because it's been a little bit of a stressful drive. Just the Uber guy's GPS was showing him a different route. It was almost taking us into the desert. And uh, just very remote, very third world feeling down. You know, this town's not bad, but on the way down here, just very, very remote. Sand dunes after sand dunes, not a lot of people, not a lot of stops. Pop the squat, why? Because. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Uber driver took us to go pee somewhere, but it was like a gas station in the middle of nowhere. But we had to. Uh, the doors were all locked, so I had to just go pee behind the place. Anyway, this place has nice bathrooms. <laughs> Gotta love that. That's how we're eating here. The simple things in life. Our plan when we started the day was to get to a town called Huacachina. It's an oasis in the middle of the sand dunes, and from Paracas, I think it would have been another hour to hour and a half long drive, but there was an accident on the road and we sat in, it was just a two lane highway, but we sat in traffic for over an hour and a half. Well, we heard that the road would be closed, so we had to turn back home. When we got back to Lima, we treated ourselves to dinner at Osaka. It's a Nikkei restaurant, which is a fusion of Peruvian and Japanese cuisine. There's actually a lot of Japanese that immigrated to Peru. Throughout Lima, you'll find a lot of restaurants that are a fusion between Japanese and Peruvian food, and also just a lot of sushi restaurants. Something that surprised us, and again, the food was outstanding. The next day, we headed out from our hotel to El Pan de la Chola. It is a bakery and sandwich shop in Miraflores. That was so good. My daughter and I love bakeries and fresh baked pastries. El Pan de la Chola did not disappoint. Highly recommend you taking the walk there. Now we're headed to Old Town Lima. You know there's a lot of traffic when street vendors could stroll down busy roads casually selling their goods. Historic Old Town Lima has a lot of old world charm. Buildings that are hundreds of years old. The city has a lot of energy. There's just a cacophony of city noise, of honking horns, motorcycles screaming by, but it's definitely a must-see when you go to Lima.
right in the heart of the city, you can find Chinatown. Also in the middle of the city, you'll find a market area. Just a lot of outdoor vendors, a lot of little mom and pop shops. It's pretty chaotic. Honestly, it kind of reminded me a lot of going to Tijuana back in the old days where just a lot of hustle and bustle, everyone yelling to try to get your attention to buy some goods. Right about now, I could use a shot of the national drink, Pisco. We wrapped up our trip. On our last night, we went to a restaurant named Maidu. This is another Nikkei restaurant, a fusion of Japanese and Peruvian food. It was rated the, in the top 50 restaurants of South America for the last two years, and it was outstanding. Why did you pick this place? It's on the top 50 restaurants in the world the past two years. Just to give you an idea of the price point for the two of us, it was about 150 US dollars. But this quality of food, this quality of service, without a doubt in the United States, you'd be paying twice that much. I consider myself a foodie. I went to culinary school in San Francisco and this place blew me away. It was just so good. I think it was a little slower we got in because of COVID times, it's a weekday, but if you're going to Peru, look this place up and make a reservation. And so we wrapped up our vacation with these two jaw-dropping desserts. <laughs>